and welcome back to my channel Capsulea Landis here for another fleet command course and today we are going to upscale a bit and move from the 8 to the 10 story mission and we are going to tackle the Caldari uh, one bad air day so let's take a look rapidly about the mission breakdown so um, the reward here is very juicy so it's a uh, 300 million isk which is um, a very fair amount of, uh, of money which would be very useful to um, equip some of my ships at the moment and of course as usual you get the nice chest at the end where you can get um, a lot of nice stuff if you are lucky uh, as this is purely random and you can get um, multiple items or single items depending on your luck so as regards the, the mission so it's a two-part combat encounters so you will start up with um, very generic uh, communication so a, a dialogue box with your patron and then move to a first combat encounters in Pakonen so fairly close to where I'm, I'll, um, my home base is located at the moment. So this is nice. That's a change for a while. Usually I get like a 10 to 15 gem at minimum uh, to start the, um, the combat encounters. Then of course you get the um, combat dialogue at the end. Then you move to another system, uh, which is very uh, close to uh, uh, my base for a scan of the system. So just um, a small trip and pose and then another communication and then you go to the last encounters which uh, is again not far off uh, my home base so it will be um, fairly sweet to actually move just around the uh, area I'm located at the moment and um, we'll see after the mission how it goes as always this is a first so uh, what you are watching is really my discovery of the um, of the mission and we'll try to do it in good shape so quick tour of the ship i will be using for uh, this mission and basically there is a small adjustment i made to the the fitting so let's move straight to the right menu no change in the high slot still using the large strike cannon um, those are the only weapon that i found um, that would match the range of the drone so that's why as you can see here 47 48 kilometers optimal and 46 in terms of um, accuracy fall off so that is on par with the drone range so you're looking at 95 100 kilometers and i'm sure um, as i still have some um, skill to train that i will be able to get to a 50 50 uh, in terms of uh, um, optimal and accuracy fall off only downside is the activation time 20 second is rather um, slow but it means the alpha damage from the the folly will be <coughs> quite substantial in terms of the mid slot um, nothing there to, uh, to add. So uh, I have the regular loadout for the Webifier and the Scrambler. This is basically just to slow down any fast moving target and enable the drones to actually um, apply the damage uh, as much efficiently as possible if there is a, um, a ship that is really in this 10-15 kilometer range and an orbit means that something gone really wrong and i need to um, dispatch because this is basically the um, highest threat that you can have your strike cannon will be completely useless in that uh, in that range the uh, angular velocity will be um, um, much too high on the uh, on the enemy ship and so only your drone will be able to um, to dispatch the, um, the nasty bugger uh, that is the change that I applied to uh, the, the loadout, so I removed the uh, target painter which was more of an annoyance than, uh, than anything else, um, didn't really have the range and uh, the drone don't need it, only the strike cannon uh, do need it, but it, it's too close to the, um, to the combined optimal and accuracy fall of, 
of the target painters you you, you are at 90 95 kilometers where I'm, I'm targeting at 95 to 100 so uh, i didn't feel that it was really adding much in terms of the dps on the on the large cannon and um, because i'm not using standard orbit uh, it, it was resetting my orbit was really cumbersome so i i did replace as i was moving to the tier 10 mission uh, I, I, I did remove it and replaced it with a, a more defensive large shield a booster so that I, I could work both on the armor side of things and on the shield uh, side of things because on some encounters you get just a slight damage on your shield and the, the large shield booster will be able to uh, cope it whereas on, on others or, or if you're fighting a Mars ship your shield will be drained very rapidly and you will get on armor and so that's why I, I do like to have the combination of the shield booster and the um, armor wrapper. On the drone side, no change in the loadout, 3 Mark 9 infiltrator, EM damage, shield focus and 2 of the Mark 9 Valkyries, so explosive damage, more armor focus. Um, this is basically because I'm kind of disconnecting the, the cannons from the drones. Uh, you've seen my, my standard tactics use the, the strike cannon to anchor my orbit and pound a cruiser plus size uh, a ship until the drone basically destroy everything that stands in between my ship and the anchor point catch up with the uh, anchor point destroy it and then rinse repeat with um, another anchor point another ship that i would be using the strike cannon in so that's why i do prefer to maintain a fair uh, the, um, distribution in terms of damage type on the on the drone some of my fits um, I use uh, two two and uh, the middle one either uh, a Vespa or the Galente one with a, a thermal damage but the, the thermal the, the Galente one they are so slow uh, for kiting uh, build I don't like them uh, I'm, I'm using them for brawling build because uh, a, a thermal is, is really most likely the best all-around damage type that you can have for, for that but uh, uh, in there, what I'm, I'm really looking to achieve is sort of a, a sustained damage over time, not a peak in armor or a peak in, um, in, in uh, shield uh, damage and then lowering. I just want to apply a fairly stable DPS uh, over time. Low slot, so of course MWD, just to be able to maintain some damage, help us also, also collect the loot uh, after the encounter is, um, is completed. Uh, complemented by three bat drone damage amplifier you see the, here that the activation time is at 27 seconds so i'm moving forward and once i reach this nice 30 second means that the three of them will give me um a hot damage application on a constant basis and that will be very very nice at the moment i still have like nine second downtime every um one minute 30 so um still have some some lower hand uh, damage uh, in there this is of course for the strike cannon a tracking computer that gives me the extra boost i need for the strike cannon to be on par with the drone range and making sure that i can hit i would say more effectively uh, in between 95 and 100 kilometers this is really the sweet spot i i want to be in of course the strike cannon they can go above and beyond especially if you if you uh, uh, push that on the hot side of things you can hit target at 120 130 kilometers uh, and still do a significant amount of, uh, of damage but that is not the main purpose just maybe to anchor at the ship which is a bit further away and then having um, a much broader range and number of ship to dispatch with the, the drone in between it's uh, kind of reduce the number of cycle anchoring destroying that i need to uh, to do and last but not least of course the c type uh, large armor wrapper so this is uh, of course standard loadout for me i'm more of an armor tank than a, a shield tank anyway uh, so my skills are better there uh, but uh, this is this is really confiating both capabilities in terms of regenerating armor and shield uh, over time so kind of a um, comfort zone in there low slot no chain whatsoever so drone firepower augmenter flat 15 dps 15 percent dps and the drone speed augmenter uh, minus 10 percent in the activation time best combo when you have only two slots available when you have three 
you go for uh, two of the uh, um, cycle time and then one on the TPS. This is complemented by a range uh, augmenter, that's a, um, a tier three. And uh, basically that is what gives me that nice 100 uh, kilometer range landmark. Not there yet, still need to level up expert four and five in, um, in drone, but that, that can wait. I mean, in between 98 and 100, that doesn't make a, a huge difference in terms of the overall effectiveness of the ship. What I go for the engineering, our targeting uh, system subcontroller, got two of them. Um, this is basically because I want to be able to target uh, as fast as possible, especially when you get fast moving target um, um, closing on, on you. You want to be able to lock on them and send the drones or use the, the, the strike cannon if it's still feasible to get rid of those before they, they land into your uh, dead zone, which is kind of uh, 15 uh, kilometer or so. And that is complemented by a memory cell. Uh, just a level one because I didn't have the money, but maybe over time I will move to a level two or level three. I'm not sure this is really necessary because I, I hardly had any cap issues uh, using that um, that ship. That's so why I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to do that. Most likely I'm going to invest on the drone um, rigs and push them to level three because that will strengthen my DPS on the drone, which is my main source um, of, of DPS anyway. So um, that's it. Let's wait now, do the mission and come back for the debrief. And back to the anger for the mission debrief and also showcasing the latest addition to my Humble Fleet, which is the Tornado and expect a fitting guide up soon on my channel because I kind of enjoy the ship. Uh, actually, it was a nice surprise, a very forgiving ship for the encounter running. Anyway, back to business. Um, update from my first experience in Badere. Mixed feeling, to be honest. It was kind of a upside downside thingy. Uh, it didn't went as expected and it's not as um, uh, uneventful as the other uh, debrief that I, I did. On the plus side, so basically the strategy is still working. So um, you basically use a strike cannon on the Dominics to anchor a large target, so cruiser and, and up start to, to fire on it and then use the drone to wipe out everything that stands in between your anchor point and um, and yourself and the ship uh, while anchoring at about 95-ish uh, kilometer uh, distance. So that still work. It's still fine. No issue uh, at all with the, the general strategy. Uh, don't forget, because this is very, very, very critical for the 10 mission to basically when you, you are at the last ship, once you hit um, um, hull, you start moving toward a celestial body, which is on the opposite side of the ship. And once you hit half hull, you start using the micro warp drive. So make sure that you are at full speed when the next enemy wave will be spawning. And that is really critical for the last wave of the first encounters where you have the elites and for wave four and five from the second encounters where again you get a high number of ships and so it's uh, fairly easy to get swarmed and spoiler alert. This is exactly what happened to me. Um, I faced a bad spawn and I was overwhelmed and the ship was destroyed. Um, other than that, I was expecting, um, let's say, lesser wave so um, uh, not necessarily the number of wave but the number of ships in the wave to be significantly reduced because um, you are facing mostly battleships uh, in the wave and that explains why those tier 10 encounters take a lot longer than the tier 6 and tier 8 um, usually you, you, you should run up uh, around uh, or a bit over four hours. In this particular case, um, it took me a bit over five hours because the ship was destroyed. And I'm gonna explain in a moment um, exactly what, what cascaded in, in, into in terms of uh, uh, timelines and, um, 
an action. So that was a bit of a surprise. Um, basically, the, the size of the waves in the, the, the wave 4 and 5 of the second combat encounters was were on par with the others. So uh, I had 24 and a bit over 30 ships to, uh, to cope with. And to be honest, I was not even expecting the fifth wave uh, in the uh, in the second encounters. And don't take me for something uh, stupid or, or silly. It's just because I'm not actually looking at the uh, uh, strats or the internet for um, uh, the, the, the wave, I, I just want to discover them and so I'm very naive when I go into those, uh, those missions and I, I'm, I'm preparing my, my video for them uh, because I'm discovering the encounter as I'm moving forward and so um, after the last encounters in the second wave I was really not expecting a fifth one. Uh, on the upside as well, um, I was expecting on the other hand a bit more in terms of elite battleship uh, and that's not the case. So in this particular encounter, uh, I had one elite battleship in the last wave of the first encounter. And then on the fourth and fifth wave, I had respectively one and two elite battleship. Why am I so concerned? It's because the elite battleship can be really nightmarish uh, to fight against because either they can have um, an exceedingly high range, even um, spacing you around and so uh, over 100 kilometers or they can move forward to you at a speed which is um, hellish I don't have any, any other word there that they're moving at such a fast speed and you know that hell is coming your way and you need to get out of there and so um, none of those really happened uh, in there so the two battleship or the three battleship that I had to uh, to face were fairly um, I would say not peaceful but fairly standard one and I didn't have any uh, strong uh, issue with them uh, altogether. The, the only thing that was a bit um, lengthy is that some of them had uh, a shield extender which basically every minute gives them a, a very strong boost in, in shield and make them more or less immune for 20 seconds. So it extends the time it takes to, um, to bring them down. Um, and that even led in the last wave to um, me having to reset them. So I was hitting this uh, 250 kilometers uh, bubble um, um, from the center of the encounters where the ship basically um, reset and, and go back. And so it took me a, a bit of time um, there. So indeed, lengthwise, it was on par to what I, um, I did expect. It's not that the mission is more difficult. As I said, the, the standard strategy is fairly, um, is, is working fine. There's, there's nothing there um, uh, to challenge, but it's just that as you are facing mainly battleship in the in the wave, they just take ages to um, to destroy at, at uh, uh, 95, 100 kilometer uh, distance. So that's why it takes time. It's not because of the necessarily the difficulty. It's more about the um, um, the, the the ship distribution. Um, I would say. Um, there again, uh, I was not expecting that many um, frigates and destroyers, uh, especially in the in the last two waves of the second encounters. But um, uh, seems they were there. So uh, as I said, I was expecting less ship, higher class, and basically what I get is high class but um, same waves in terms of uh, uh, ship number as before and more or less the same distribution of course because you are not limited to cruiser or battle cruiser but you have all three classes there was a bit of spread in between and a reduction in the number of uh, cruiser and battle cruiser and that being transferred for the battleship but um, other than that it was uh, a fairly straightforward so what happened then um, basically in the second encounter's fourth wave, I had a bad spawn, uh, which means that most likely I did some mistakes at the end of the third wave and did not select the right celestial body to move to do. Okay, because I, I did it, I, I selected the, the celestial body and I moved toward it, but the wave spawned very close to my ship, so like 60 kilometers uh, range whereas usually they're at 90 or over 100. And with that being said, basically the um, frigate and destroyer were upon me before I could change direction or target them. 
and I had to destroy them and I, I think in the wave management um, I maybe panicked a bit and um, I was not looking at the right target so the one I should have prioritized were the one with the warp scrambler because not only do they prevent me from warping away but they also disable my warp, uh, micro warp drive um, device and so that prevented me to gain speed, momentum and being able to uh, outpace maybe some of the, the larger uh, threats that were there. But um, I just ran crazy and targeted anything that had uh, a warp point on me and potentially that was uh, uh, one of the mistakes. The, the other issue which is sort of bad luck is that um, there was an, an elite battle cruiser that went there and that one was the, the one that tipped um, the, the outcome because basically the, the frigate and the destroyer I was managing fairly okay I could have been uh, destroying them before being able to then reactivate my MWD and moving away from the situation but because the, the elite battle cruiser was there it was just pounding me um, uh, to death and I was not able to recuperate from uh, from that one basically I ended up uh, killing all the frigate and destroyers that w that were scrambling me and it was just the uh, uh, battle cruiser which I I ended up uh, mid armor so I, I was nearly halfway through when my ship exploded so that was the the, the first thing that happened <laughs> and uh, yeah kind of a surprise but fortunately I was insured so what were the, uh, the the losses is basically and I was not aware of that um, as you, you were destroyed there is a, a loot box from your ship that dropped and that be, that contains stuff that you don't get back with insurance and so fortunately there was a station in system so I, I took my capsule back to the station get back my hull and most of the equipment but I was down losing the large shield uh, group repair uh, which was one of my uh, uh, let's say tanking uh, uh, device alongside the um, uh, armor repair part so I was left with a ship that would not be able to repair itself uh, on top of that I lose of course the plasmoid which were in my cargo hold and a drone which uh, again impacted my overall DPS and reduced it by um, more or less flat 20%. Um, that said, as I thought that the fourth wave was the last one, what I foolishly did is re-equip my ship with all the modules and weapons that were um, given back by the insurance system and went back to finishing the uh, encounter. And when the fifth wave spawned uh, well then I warped away get back to Jita re-equipped completely the ship and went back in and it took me an additional hour so one hour to finish the the fourth wave with the um, let's say uh, downed uh, Dominics and then one additional hour to finish the fifth wave with the full complement and in between I had to warp out to Jita, get the stuff, re-equip the ship and fly back. And that led me to being over the two hour timer on your uh, loot box and losing uh, the saved equipment. It was not so um, a problem. The, the main loss was the uh, Type C armor repair. That, that is about uh, 90 million uh, in terms of loss plus the insurance. So that was... Um, a hundred plex more or less so uh, 180 million at current market price so you would see already that I lost 270 million out of the uh, encounter fortunately the bounty is about 300 not not about 300 million and um, or, or the rewards not the bounty the rewards and the bounty I made was about 11 million in the, um, the first encounters and 30 million in the second encounter so about 40 million uh, in total so that left me with a net profit of about 70 million for a total of five hour game time so it is profitable yes 
uh, but it is a bit less than what I would usually do just running normal encounters. I'm certain that this is a combination of bad luck from the spawn and me, let's say, uh, reacting badly and not staying focused on identifying the right threats to my ship, disposing of them and then being able to use my MWD moving away from the, the damage dealing and then uh, being able to recuperate uh, on that. So good experience. I mean, uh, I, I absolutely no, hard, no hurt feeling uh, whatsoever. It's a good experience. I still was able to manage a, a, a small profit out of it, not counting on the um, loot because I had the chest box and of course all the loot that I was able to um, get back from the, the wreckage and more specifically the uh, um, elite uh, of wreckage. So a, a good hard learned lesson um, in there. At least the tier 10 are, are proving to be more challenging for the Dominics. Uh, uh, I won't say that the, the, the ship is uh, sort of overpowered for the encounter. I think this is really on par. You get a, um, a really fair chance of being destroyed if one, you get a, um, a bad spawn, and in addition to that, you you had helped your transition in between the hair, the wave, and um, sort of uh, you don't get your your head straight managing the threat in the correct order once you are a bit uh, overwhelmed by the, um, uh, the the wave. But other than that, I think it is uh, a fairly straightforward um, to do those tier 10 mission. And I will try another one, maybe Sweet Poison um, to get another another feel. Uh, but it is, it is of course a bit less interesting. The, the, the reward I think is a, is a bit less like uh, 250 million instead of 300. So the, the bad hair there remains the, the more profitable one um, in the end. But anyway, I'm going to continue uh, working on the on the tier 10 mission and you can expect additional video for um, the last of, um, of those. Um, that's about everything that I wanted to share on that. So key message, tactics is still working fine. No issue on that. Just be much more careful about your positioning when transitioning uh, the wave, especially when you, you reach the uh, uh, final waves in the uh, battle encounters and make sure that if something happens, your head stay cold and you manage it properly, which most likely I, I didn't do, but I'm, I'm going to look into a bit more details in the um, uh, video part and if you're interested just go and look I will post some text comment about what I think were my mistakes uh, uh, In there so you can benefit from uh, from that video Yep, that's it. Uh, so if you find the content useful um, Hit like button it helps my channel get a bit more attention by the Google algorithms and get a bit more visibility if you find it really useful then uh, subscribe and you will be notified of any upcoming video that I will be posting on this channel. In the meantime, fly safe, enjoy the game and see you in another video.